Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Adiba Shah Jahan, and I'll be running the webinar today. So I see a question. If you have any general questions regarding your application, if you're a current applicant for fall 2020, I would highly recommend you email us at global-students at sjsu.edu. Uh, we'll be able to answer your specific questions there. However, if you have any general questions regarding the university, we'll be happy to answer um, at the chat today. Okay, good evening, everybody. Again, my name is Adiba Shah Jahan, and I'm the International Recruitment Specialist at the College of Professional and Global Education at San Jose State University. So I'll start with the overview of the university. I'll give you a little bit of idea about the location. I'll give you some idea about um, job prospects here and all the services we provide to our international students um, at San Jose. And we'll also go over application um, information. So San Jose State University is part of the California State University system. Um, as many of you may already know, it's one of the largest systems in the United States. The Cal State system comprises of 23 campuses all over California. San Jose State University is the founding campus of the California State University system. So we are actually the first public institution in all of the Western region of the US. Uh, we were founded in 1857. And San Jose State University uh, is not only you know, the first public institution, but is fully accredited by Western Association of Schools and Colleges. And as you know, um, when you apply to a university or institution in the United States, it's very important that you choose an institution that is accredited because you know, it's very important that your degree comes from an you know, institution that's not only accredited, but is also you know, known by future employers. So um, that's one of the most important things you should look for. And at San Jose, we offer over 145 fields of study with 108 concentrations. So there are lots of different areas to choose from um, and you will be able to find exactly what all majors we offer at the university on our website as well. So there are many reasons students choose San Jose. Some of the most important reasons, reason for an international student is always academic excellence. We take pride in the fact that we rank fifth among all public universities in the Western United States, which is according to the US News. Our School of Business, and many of you may be interested in business programs, whether it be at the graduate or the undergraduate level. Um, we offer many different concentrations and areas in business at the undergraduate level and MBA program at the graduate level. It's important that you choose a business program that is accredited again. And our business school is accredited by AACAS and we rank among the best 295 best um, business schools in the United States. Some of you may be looking into engineering programs and our co College of Engineering ranks third among all public engineering programs offering both the bachelor's and master's programs. We also rank among the top 200 schools nationwide for total research and development expenditures. So many of you may be looking into different majors, some of you may be looking into computer science, for example, uh, and you may be interested in doing research. Um, it's, it's important that you pick a school that has the funding uh, available for research. Um, hence, Cal State is a great option for international students because of the funding that's available. Now, many of you may be interested in software engineering or human factors and ergonomics. And you'd be surprised to know that San Jose ranks sixth among top 50 best value graduate UX design programs. So if any of you are interested in design particularly, um, this is um, our human factors and ergonomics or software engineering programs um, offer these design programs. So this may be something you should look into. So now a little bit about the location of the university. We're located on the west coast of the United States, as you can see on the map in front of you. San Jose State University is located in the northern part of California. As you can see, we are about 80 kilometers away, 80 kilometers south of San Francisco. So if you fly into San Francisco, it'll take you about an hour to 45 minutes, depending on traffic, to get to San Jose. Um, but the location where we are is in the heart of Silicon Valley. And you can see we've made a circle around the area of San Francisco and San Jose. 
And that is the area we generally refer to as the Bay Area. And this is where all the big Silicon Valley companies that you hear about are located. Our campus itself is located in downtown San Jose. So it's in the heart of the city. I'll tell you more about the city in a little bit, but we're surrounded by beautiful locations, as you can see um, on the screen. Santa Cruz, for example, is only 50 kilometers away. Um, you can, you know, go and enjoy and have a beach day whenever you want. San Francisco, like I said, is not too far. It's about a um, an hour to 45 minutes. Um, there's Big Sur, there's Napa Valley, if anybody's interested in, you know, checking out the wine <laughs> county, that's also there. Um, Moss Landing is a famous destination for fishing and, you know, for seeing sea otters. Uh, it's Generally, it's just a beautiful location. Uh, as you know, California is, the, is a prime destination for international students. The largest number of international students actually come to California, not only because of the universities, but also because it's, it's just a fantastic location. If anybody's interested in hiking and, you know, you've looked into Yosemite, it's only about two and a half hours hours from our campus. Many of you may be interested in Los Angeles. We put that on the photo as well. But Los Angeles is quite quite the distance. I mean, it's in Southern California. So if you were to go there from San Jose, it would take you around six to seven hours. So that is quite far away, but that's doable, right? So during your weekends or when you have some time off, you are able to go and explore Southern California as well. But there's plenty to do up in the north. It's, it's a fantastic location. And I'll tell you a little bit more in terms of location. We are one of the most diverse cities in the U.S. As you can imagine, it's Silicon Valley. Everybody wants to live and work here because of the opportunities that are present here. And uh, San Jose is also the 10th largest city in the United States. Um, it's the third largest city in California. And uh, the weather throughout the year is really beautiful. It's really pleasant. Uh, there's uh, 300 plus days of sunshine and many of you can relate to this. You know, those of you who are in India or in China, you know, weather can be an important factor, right? So we here are very lucky. I mean, our summers are not too hot and our winters are not too cold. As you can see, we also put in the uh, temperature for you. Generally, it's, it doesn't exceed uh, 29 degrees Celsius. Generally, that's typically the average temperature in summer. And the winters are also pretty mild. And also, as we are talking about location, there's an international airport located in San Jose as well. So if you choose, you can fly into San Jose as well. And the San Jose International Airport is only eight kilometers from our campus. So it's very, very close to the campus. So San Jose um, and Silicon Valley and the San Francisco Bay Area that I was referring to earlier, um, it is the second largest region in California. Uh, the population of this area is about 7.5 million. So, you know, when you when you first think about San Jose, you probably think, you know, it's much smaller, but the, you know, it, it is quite spread out and there is a lot of people living in this area. And um, San Jose has the highest number of Fortune 500 companies. Actually, the second highest amount of Fortune 500 companies are located in this area. Because of all the job opportunities and, you know, all the universities and, and you know, all the, all the opportunities that are present here, this is also one of the most educated, college educated region, right? So the literacy rate is very high here. Um, so we rank second most college educated region in, in, in the United States. And as you can imagine, since people are coming here from all over the world, you know, it, we, this place attracts a lot of international students. So it is very diverse and you can expect people speaking more than 100 different languages. So no matter what language you speak, chances are you'll meet someone who speaks the same language, which is really, really um, fantastic. And, you know, it's, re it's really uh, comforting to know that you will find someone who speaks your language. So at San Jose, um, the primary reason why students choose our university, I believe, is because of the industry connections. We take pride in the location near the Silicon Valley companies, but also the connections we have developed through our professors in the area. So when you start here at San Jose, many of the professors you will meet and you will be taking classes with, they have either already worked for Silicon Valley companies or they're currently working with Silicon Valley companies. So they come with a lot of industry experience and connections. 
through San Jose, you'll be able to do networking and internships with multinational corporations. And as you can see, we've put in a few logos here just so you have an idea. I mean, we all know about Apple, we all know about uh, Google and Uber, but you know, there's a good mix of industries. It's not just IT and engineering and tech. And I'll, we'll get into a little bit of that on our on my next slides. Just to give you an idea, you know, there's a whole different range of uh, different companies um, that we have connections with. And um, um, there are over 75,000 companies in the Silicon Valley area and around 6,600 are in tech. So you can only imagine the job opportunities are plenty over here. Um, and as you can see, like I was saying um, just a few seconds ago about the different industries, you know, if you look at the pie chart, you'll see that it's not just engineering, IT and tech, although that takes a majority of the chunk, which is around 27%. But business and financial sector, you know, has a lot of job offerings, it's, which is around 16%. Um, they're looking for students who are, you know, who are graduating with the background in education, for example, communication, advertising, public relations, um, healthcare, hospitality. So they're looking for um, you know, students with experience in many different areas. It's not just engineering, IT, or technology. Although we all uh, tend to prefer to go with STEM programs, you know, there are a lot more different opportunities you can look into as well. We um, at San Jose, our university ranks number one for having the most Silicon Valley hires. Um, and as you can see, we've put down a few rankings. Our alumni employment ranks high in companies such as Apple and Cisco, where we rank number one. Uh, Adobe, we rank number two. Facebook, we rank number eight and number 10 at Google. So, you know, these are some of the big, you know, the big names and none of these companies need any introduction. And generally the job opportunities that are present are in various different areas. You know, even at Apple, they'll be looking for um, skills uh, which are related to, for example, maybe public relations, right? So it's, it's so they're looking for all different types of skill set. Now, just to give you an idea, I mean, you know, the degrees for the future. I mean, when, when we think about choosing a university, we shouldn't just think about what you will be doing right now, but you should, you should think ahead and think about, okay, what's, what, what are the jobs in demand in the next five years or say next 10 years? What would give me opportunities to stay employed and, you know, and that too at a, at a good job, you know, where you see yourself in the future. At San Jose, we are, you know, one of the top colleges for working in Silicon Valley because of all the connections we have developed over the years with all the companies. And some of the programs that I wanted to highlight, I mean, these are not necessarily degrees that will be in demand in the future, but these are some degrees that we offer, which are popular right now. For example, aviation and technology, our program ranks number four in the United States. So if anybody's looking for aviation at the undergraduate level, we are still accepting applications for fall 2020. And our aviation program ranks among uh, top four in the U.S. We also offer a packaging program under nutrition science, nutritional science, if you, um, if anybody's interested in doing something a little bit different. SJSU is, uh, is one of the only schools, one of the, one out of only 20 uh, universities that is currently offering this program in the United States. So this is something you could look at as well. And of course, we have a hospitality, tourism and event management program. And being in California, this program has a lot, you know, has a high demand. And there are lots of job opportunities, internships available um, related to this uh, program. So, you know, the, these are some programs you can look into. And for students who are looking into computer science, um, you're already aware, you do know that it, it's quite competitive and it's Sometimes, you know, you, it's, it's very competitive and you need to have very good grades uh, to get into the program. So, you know, an alternative option could be for you to apply for applied computational mathematics, uh, because if you choose this program, you are eligible to minor in computer science and uh, the applied computational mathematics 
program is also offered through the College of Science, which offers our computer science program. And it's, it's a STEM program, you know, basically computer science is pretty much math and this program will not be much different and you will have the ability to minor in computer science which means after you graduate, you can look into similar job opportunities or, you know, similar research areas uh, if you're interested. So that's something you can look into as well as an alternative. Now for graduate students, you know, you know many of you are interested in STEM programs and uh, our College of Engineering offers over 14 different engineering programs, starting from aerospace engineering to software engineering. We have material science, uh, civil engineering, electrical engineering. We have all the programs, uh, but I wanted to highlight our Master of Biotechnology program because not only because it's a fantastic program, but Silicon Valley is also home to 400 plus biotech companies. Um, so there are a lot of job opportunities in this area and it is a STEM category program. So if anybody's interested in biotechnology, we're still accepting applications till April 1st. So if you are interested to find out more about the program, feel free to check our website or send us an email and we'll be giving you details uh, towards the end of the presentation. Uh, like I said previously, our College of Engineering, which also offers the biotechnology program, uh, ranks number three among all the engineering programs in the United States. And this is according to US News and World Report. Among our engineering program, like I mentioned before, we have me me mechanical engineering, we have general engineering, we have engineering management. For those of you who are interested to look into the technical side of it, but also at the same time want to focus on business, engineering management is a great fit and it's a STEM program. Uh, we also have general engineering, which does not have a um, GRE requirement. So there are certain programs you can look into, a wide range of programs you can look into actually. And we also have a biomedical engineering program. So, you know, if you have any questions regarding our engineering programs, feel free to reach out to us. At San Jose, uh, because we have a high volume of um, international students, we also make sure that all our students receive the career support that they need. And in order to do that, we have dedicated advisors to help international students. Throughout the year, you can go into the International Student and Scholar Services Office to get information on things like CPT, uh, which is curricular practical training, or OPT upon graduation, you know, there's pre-completion OPT, there's post-completion OPT. Um, there's so many things that, you know, you have to basically understand and learn uh, when you arrive in the United States and you find out more, you know, as you get more into your program and you start getting ready for internships, these advisors are very good, you know, source of information for you. So we ensure that you not only get the proper advising, but you also have the resources in order for you to apply to these jobs. So our career services office, for example, will be able to set up mock interviews with you. So you are able to practice your interviews and also work on your soft skills. Of course, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the classroom. You're going to be, you know, listening to lectures. You'll be preparing for quizzes but also at the same time, you need to work on your soft skills as well. So our career uh, support office does a fantastic job in providing you um, um, all the support that you need. And of course, um, they will guide you in terms of finding um, good, you know, um, resources in, in, which supports your um, job search, uh, helping with your uh, writing your resumes, uh, preparing your CVs, for example. And of course, you can always go to the writing center. Um, a lot of you will be writing a lot of research papers. Um, maybe you're working on an essay. Um, any type of writing assistance that you might need, you can go to the writing center at any point. So you just have to book an appointment and go to improve your writing skills and get tutoring sessions. So those facilities are available to you throughout the year. San Jose State University is known for exceptional value. Um, we rank one of the top 10 best value colleges in California. We also rank number 20 in the U.S. of uh, in the U.S. for best return on investment. We rank number four most transformative college, according to Money Magazine, which, which was recently published, I would say it was just a few months ago. 
And the last one, number one most underrated college in the U.S., you know, for obvious reasons, San Jose has so much to offer to our students. There are so many different areas that students go, go, go into and us ranking number one uh, for sending our graduates to Silicon Valley companies. Sometimes, you know, we don't get the attention, <laughs> the media attention that we deserve. Hence, we were ranked uh, number one most underrated college, according to College Vine, I believe that's the source of that information. So now I'll tell you a little bit about our international students at San Jose State University. We have international students from over 100 different countries. So chances are, no matter where you're from, you're going to find a, another student from you know, the country you're from. We have more international students than any other master's granting university in the U.S. So if you look at the IIE Open Doors data, you will see um, we rank number one in the master's granting category for having the most number of international students. The total enrollment at San Jose State University is approximately 33,000. And I would say around 10% are international students. So we have 3,000 plus international students currently attending, enrolled at San Jose State University. Because we have such a large number of international students, and uh, you know, as I went over on my previous slides, we also make sure our students have all the services available to them you know, once they arrive on campus. So we also have a large um, staff supporting our international students on campus. So our international students come from a wide range of countries, but we try to highlight the top countries of origin uh, so you have an idea. So for undergraduate students, you know, our top countries are China, Vietnam, India, Taiwan, Japan, Korea, and, and the rest. And for graduate students, India ranks number one, followed by China, Taiwan, Canada. So there's a, you know, a whole range of different countries. Uh, and it's a good mix as well. Um, so just by looking at the top 10 countries, you can see, you know, it is quite diverse. We get students from all over the world. Our campus community is very robust. It's a big campus. We have a 154 acre campus um, in downtown San Jose. And, um, you know, when you'll be attending San Jose as an international student, you won't be just focusing on your studies. You will also be participating in clubs and organizations, which I highly recommend because, you know, this is how you network. This is how you grow your connections. This is how you make friends. And later on down the line, this will help you with a lot of different areas, such as, you know, finding jobs, making connections. Um, at San Jose, we have over 450 plus clubs and organizations. So no matter which country you're from or what faith or religion you believe in, you will find a club that caters to that group. At San Jose, we also have many different facilities, not only just NCAA Division I sports. I know many of you are interested to find out about sports. Uh, even if you don't have the time to play, you are able to cheer on seven men's and 12 women's teams. And the fact that we're Division I, you know, these games can be really, really interesting and really entertaining. We have many on-campus art shows, cultural events, concerts throughout the year. So there's plenty to do throughout the year. Students who are from countries like India or China or, you know, different parts of the world, we bring in artists from all over. So it's really fun. There's always something going on. And the, the best part is you are able to participate and go to these events at a, at a fraction of the cost. So it's, it's really, really fun um, to be a student here. We also have new facilities for our students. We have the new student union where the International Student Services Office and our International Recruitment and Partnership Office is located. The new student union has its uh, state-of-the-art facilities, entertainment options like bowling. We have a food court. Um, so, you know, there's a, even, even a prayer room, meditation room, so you, banking, so everything that you can think of, transportation solution, the student union is like a one-stop shop, you can get all the facilities that you need on a day-to-day, -day, um, you know, in your day-to-day -day life. Uh, in one building. So it's, it's really amazing. We are also currently, um, the new uh, Student Recreation and Aquatic Center is, has also been completed. And the, the best part is that as an international student, you are able to 
you know, avail the facilities free of cost. Um, when you pay the tuition and fees, it's already covered. And um, if you have um, a chance, you know, to go on YouTube, just take a look at the facility. It's, it's really nice. It has two Olympic sized pools. It has um, rock climbing, um, all kinds of workout facilities. It's, it's really, really nice facility. We also have the only Beethoven Center in North America, which is located in, in our uh, library at the Martin Luther King Library uh, for anybody who's interested in classical music. And we're currently under construction for a $181 million interdisciplinary science building, which is going to be launched in the next maybe year. Um, so lots going on on campus, lots of different things you can look into and keep busy. And also, of course, campus safety is very important for international students. And we at San Jose State University ensure that all our students are always safe. Uh, hence, we have the University Police Department who patrols the campus 24-7. You know, they're always there um, in, in, in any emergency situation. We also offer free safety escort to any location on campus. For example, you know, during finals week, if you are having to study late at night and you don't feel, you know, comfortable walking back to your dorm, uh, you can you can give them a call. They'll pick you up and take you to your location. I think that's really fantastic. We also have blue light phones throughout our campus. So, you know, if at, at any point, you know, you see something suspicious, you are able to press the button and um, talk to the UPD, um, which is, this is also available all throughout the campus. And the best part is our university, our campus got ranked one of the safest campuses in California. And this is according to the National Council for Home Safety and Security. So at San Jose, safety is taken very seriously. We also send alerts to our students. You know, once you enroll as a student here, you'll be getting alerts on um, safety, you know, if something is going on on campus, you'll receive a text message, you'll receive an email, so you'll always be up to date on everything that's going on on campus. So we take uh, safety very seriously here. Housing options um, are plenty. Um, as you can imagine, we have 33,000 students. So, you know, San Jose is a commuter campus, but for international students, um, and freshmen, undergraduate students, it's mandatory for you to stay on campus your first year. And you can see on the photograph, you can see a photograph of our campus village. Uh, we have eight residence buildings. These are a dormitory and apartment style. You, and basically you share a unit with another student. So at these residence buildings, we have over approximately 3,500 bed spaces. And like I said, you share with another individual, there's a common bath and um, the cafeteria and a convenience store is also within walking distance. It's really close to the campus village. So it's very convenient for you to get your meals and um, the campus housing also has laundry facilities. You can also, you know, prepare some meals. And generally for, like I said, for undergraduate freshmen, it is mandatory for you to stay on campus your first year, unless you request a waiver for various different reasons, which you can, you know, write to us and we can, we can clarify that. Our campus buildings, uh, the housing is very close to public transportation as well. So it makes it very convenient for you to get across, you know, town if you, if you were to go somewhere off campus. Um, we also have the International House, which is available to international students. It's comfortable and a welcoming home. And generally every year, the I House will accept applications from a combination of 70 U.S. and international students. I think it's, it's a lovely facility, you know, it's, it's smaller than a residence building, yet at the same time, it's, it's more, you know, you get to get to know people better because, you know, it's a smaller sort of setting. And it, this is also located next to our campus, literally a five minute walk from our campus. And uh, it comes equipped with study and computer rooms. And um, they also have a kitchen where you are able to cook. So if you get accepted at, if you apply to San Jose and you get accepted at San Jose, you are able to apply to um, live at the I house as well. There is an application for international house. So if anybody's interested, 
please feel free to go to the website and take a look at the virtual tour and um, you know, or you can go to the website to find out more information about the iHouse. And uh, throughout the year, they host events and activities. Um, they'll have uh, breakfast, pancake breakfast. They'll have coffee sessions. You know, they have um, different events throughout the year, inviting both U.S. and international students. It's just a great place to just hang out. You know, after a busy day, fun time with your friends. At San Jose, the admission process. I'll go over the undergraduate freshman process first. So those of you who are looking to apply for fall 2020, the application is still open for most of our programs. So you'll be doing your application through Cal State Apply. But the requirements, I'll go over the requirements first before I tell you about the Cal State Apply. Um, so we are looking at a U.S. high school GPA of three on a four scale. So you need to maintain a three GPA on a four scale. You also would have to show three years of college preparatory mathematics with a C grade or higher. For all our programs, with the exception of engineering, we're looking at a TOEFL score of 61. Uh, for engineering students, the TOEFL score is 80. IELTS, for th those of you who are looking to take an IELTS exam, it's 6.0 or PTE of 44. Now, SAT or ACT exam is not required, but highly recommended. The, generally, students who are applying to programs that are impacted um, or competitive, I would highly recommend you for you to take the SAT exam. We require students to send their high school transcripts in a sealed, official sealed envelope. And uh, you must also submit your high school diploma or graduation certificate once you, uh, once you receive it from your school. So we will need a copy of your high school diploma or your graduation certificate as well. So again, the requirements are three out of four uh, GPA, three years of mathematics um, with a C grade or higher, the TOEFL scores are listed and um, you know, the sealed official high school transcripts from your school. Uh, along with a copy of your high school diploma or graduation certificate. Now for undergraduate transfer students, um, the TOEFL remains the same. IELTS score, you can see it's a 6.0 and PTE is 44. Uh, GPA we're looking at is a 2.0 or higher in all US United States college coursework you've done in the United States, the GPA has to be 2.0 or higher. Now, if the coursework was done internationally, then the GPA has to be 3.0 or higher. You also have to ensure that you are maintaining a you know, good standing at the last institution. And of course, you have to take a look at the impaction criteria for your major as well. And that you can find on our website. You know, We list the impaction criteria. Um, on our um, international admissions page, you will find uh, CSU eligibility index, will, which will give you a better idea of the impaction criteria. Now for, uh, you know, there's two type of undergraduate transfer process. There's the lower division transfer and the upper division transfer. Lower division transfer are for students who have completed 60 semester or 90 quarter or less transferable units. Now, if you're a lower division transfer, you have to meet all the freshman requirements, which I went over on my previous slide. Now, if you have more than 60 semester or 90 quarter units, then you will have to ensure that you have the four basic skills with the C minus or higher. Now these four basic skill classes are a, a course in oral communication, a course in written composition, a course in critical thinking, and a course in mathematics or quantitative reasoning. So these are the four California golden fours that you have to make sure um, you, have, you have completed in order to be qualified as a upper division student. For graduate students um, who are looking to apply to San Jose, we're looking for a four-year four year bachelor's degree or diploma. We're looking for a U.S. equivalent GPA of 2.5 minimum on the last two years of university coursework. Now, that is the minimum. Um, generally, I would highly recommend a 3.0 GPA 
uh, for majority of our coursework. For example, if you're applying for engineering, if you're applying for computer science, if you're applying to any STEM category programs, a 3.0 or higher GPA is highly recommended. TOEFL requirement is an 80. Um, IELTS is a 6.5. PTE is 53. Um, all graduate students must submit their uh, transcripts to WES and a WES evaluation, a WES document by document evaluation is required for all international students. Uh, when students typically send for a WES evaluation, you have to send your transcripts up to, if you're, if you're from India, you have to ensure that your transcripts um, when you send it to WES is up to seven semester. That's something you have to pay attention to. Um, now, these are general requirements. There are several programs which will have higher and additional academic requirements and separate applications. Uh, for example, our master's in public health program not only require a Cal State apply application, Cal State application, but also a separate department application. So many programs will have additional requirements and separate application processes which you have to pay attention to. So it's very important that you uh, visit the website, you look at the program, you look, read all the details before you um, start your application. And also please check the graduate admissions and program evaluation site for information on document submission and all the details that I um, went over. So um, you can apply online. And like I said, application is still open uh, for fall 2020. We're accepting applications and online at Cal State Apply. You will need to pay a non-refundable. There's a $70 application fee and um, additional documents that you have to show are um, a bank statement and the amounts are listed. So it's around 41551 dollars for undergraduate students and for graduate students it's 40,600 approximately um, that you have to show on your bank statement. Along with the bank statement you have to ensure that you also download a copy of the declaration of finance form from our website. You have to make sure you fill in all the details and make sure to get a signature from your sponsor. It could be a family member, it could be a relative, it could be uh, whoever the sponsor is that we need to have the signature. The form has to be signed by the sponsor. Uh, along with the bank statement and declaration of finance form, you also have to send us a copy of your passport biographic page and generally students are able to upload these three documents on the my uh, sjsu portal so now when you apply to san jose state university on cal state apply and you complete and submit the application within seven to ten business days you will receive an email with your MySJSU login information you will have a username and a password with which you'll set up your portal and from then on, you will be monitoring the status of your, you know, uh, of your document submission, all the different steps through the portal itself. So it's very important that you make sure to set up your SJ, my SJSU account uh, for updates on your application. So now the fall 2020 application deadlines, um, undergraduate deadline for most programs is April 1st. And again, you apply through Cal State Apply. San Jose is not part of the common application process, so you do have to apply through Cal State Apply. For fall 2020, the graduate deadline for most programs, again, is April 1st, and you will be using the same system. Uh, if you need any assistance uh, or, you know, if you need more information on how to apply, please go to sjsu.edu slash global slash how to apply. So that information is there for those of you who are looking to apply for uh, fall 2020. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Again, we have a virtual tour that you can take. There's a link for that. Our social media handles and our contact email is listed on this page. So uh, our email address uh, to reach out to International Recruitment and Partnership Office is global-students at sjsu.edu. Now, if you have already applied to San Jose and you're a current applicant and you have any questions regarding your application, feel free to email us, but do include your nine-digit MySJSU ID number so we are able to look up your uh, information. So that pretty much concludes my um, presentation, uh, overview of the university.